Good afternoon. Today we have another meeting of the Expert Analytical Club. Before we begin in connection with today's event, I would like to state the following. Today we have learned that our Belarusian office is in the pre process of liquidation, but we, the press club team, continue to work and remain faithful to our mission. That is to support the journalistic community, help it develop and act as a platform for dialogue between various actors. Today's topic is repression against Belarusian analytical community. Also, we will discuss the future of the analytical community in connection with events we're witnessing these days. Our today's speakers are Andrei Kazakevich, Doctor of Political Science, Director of the Institute of Political Sphere, and Executive Director of the Belarusian as Association of Research Centers. Hello, Andrei. Natalia Ryabova, Director of Simpa Bipart. Rahor Astapenia, Director of the Chat MS Belarus Initiative, and also Research Director of the Center for New Ideas. Hello, Rigor. Next is Katerina Bornukova. She is a PhD in economics and academic director of Biroc. We have a director's club here. I would like to remind you that we have an English interpretation available. It's a simultaneous interpretation. If you prefer to listen to us in this language, please choose the appropriate soundtrack. Also, if you choose the soundtrack Russian or English in the Zoom settings, if you do that, if you choose the Russian track, you'll hear us in Russian and Belarusian. If it's English, you will be selecting that it's English. The format of the club meeting is as usual now for the speakers and now for the discussion. Every Every participant of the meeting has right to take part in the discussion. If you want to ask something, you want to ask a question, you want to say something, please write that in the chat or turn on your mic and use your voice. I would also like to remind you that we are recording this session. The Chatham House rules that we apply in terms of preliminary notification mean that if, if you want to say something, and you, you don't want it, this to be recorded, please warn us about this in advance. We will cut this out and uh, all other participants will know that they should not quote you on this. Now I'd like to give floor to my co-moderator, Vadim Mazeka. Vadim, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anton. Indeed, today we have a director's club of the liquidated agencies and organizations. We're receiving no more news about the more organizations closed down in Belarus. This cannot be liquidated, which is good. Undoubtedly, the repression that the expert community is facing in Belarus They are part of the general picture of repression faced by the civil community. Of course, there is some specificity to it that we will discuss today. It is very difficult to discuss things and analyze things when our colleagues are in jail, like Valeria Kostikova, that we have met here in this Analytical club many times. She is now in the temporary detention detention facility. Tatiana Kuzmina from the Simpa is also in jail. There are many more people jailed now. So we'll be we remember that. The first question that I want to start with is as the expert community, how much are we ready for it? It's hard to say that repression of the 
this year and previous year became a surprise. We have discussed this here and in other meetings of the expert clubs. How much everything that happened was expected by us and how are we coping with it? Unfortunately, the, we cannot hear the speaker. Looks like uh, Vadim has uh, internet issues. Therefore, I think I will continue now. We'll start with our first question. And this is how much were we ready as an expert community in, for this development of events? Right, we'll start with the order that we'll be ready. Laid out, we'll start with Andrei Kazakevich. Andrei, please. I'd say that the expert community was not very well prepared for this, was not really ready. Many expert organizations knew what it was coming to, but everyone was hoping it would not be of that scale. People were hoping that it will not affect the organizations that not so long ago had uh, relatively good relations with uh, some ministries and state agencies. There were organizations that that are not registered in Belarus, that have existed in Belarus since its foundation. Many have the infrastructure outside Belarus and have links to international universities and foreign universities. The most serious blow was uh, was done to the organizations that were trying to play according to the rules set by the authorities and also working with the Belarusian budgets. A lot can be said here. A lot could be said about this three or four months ago, but it was impossible to get fully ready to what we are witnessing these days. It's hard to find mechanisms, particularly we remember that a lot of energy was invested into the infrastructure based in Belarus, including actions connected with uh, various projects. We expect a brief formatting of the expert community and the new fields of activities in the situation when the, the public activity in Belarus will be heavily limited. The major model here will be a mix with some presence inside the country and some public representations outside of the country. This model could be uh, sustainable and look sustainable to us in the current status quo. If the policy of the state towards the civil society organizations doesn't change. Thank you, Andre. It looks like the pressures so affected the moderator in the Zoom, which is quite a symbolic. The steps that are taken now, how much will they help to cope with the situation, do you think? Are there any challenges in how the expert community is trying to react to what is happening now? 
I could you repeat the question, please? Yes. You said that it was difficult to get ready to what is happening and the organizations are trying to react. So my question is, will this reaction help to solve the problem? It's the first reactions that we're witnessing. It's hard to evaluate them because the major success or failure of the reprimanding process will depend on whether it we they will manage manage to build the infrastructure outside Belarus in Kiev, Warsaw, or Vilnius, somewhere else. It will. The fact that these investments will be provided will depend and will basically affect the success of these activities. The process has just started and the organizations are all different. They are uh, existing in different conditions. As I said, some organizations had before this crisis infrastructure and platforms that could use outside the country. Those of them who had nothing faced certain problems. These problems have to do with the time that is needed to switch to the new model. In this respect, I must say that this new model was well developed in the last several years, particularly in the ESPR community. It had to do with the COVID and uh, the changes in the possibilities of uh, offline meetings. So this thing, this not connected with situation with of uh, Belarus will help people to move to the new format. Thank you, Andre. We need to move on. Mr. Ariabova represents the organizations that that encountered all the problems that we have mentioned today. Simpa is being liquidated today. Please, Natalia, tell us whether you were ready to these events and how you coped with them. First of all, I would like to note that indeed the COVID really helped us to rebuild our work. We started working more online and with the first wave of repression, some of my colleagues left Belarus. So we've been working in the mixed format for a long time. This format is becoming more and more pop popular these days. Um, we actually knew that it would, co would come to that, but it was really unpleasant. Uh, I wasn't psychologically prepared to the rest of the Tiana Kuzina. That's for sure. How are we managing to cope with it? It's an uh, organizational issue, and management issue, and a psychological issue. I mean, you, can you assess the threats? Every day we read news about liquidation of a, uh, an organization. Some people find the management managerial issue the most difficult to cope with. Others believe it's the psychological issue that the most difficult to tackle. We need to understand what kind of help will be needed to export organizations. I'm not really worried about the legal entity. I mean, if they want to liquidate it, they close it down, let them do that. I don't know how uh, they're going to do it quickly. 
without any inspections because the law says there should be some communication with the state authorities and so on. I don't know how they're going to do this from a technical standpoint, but as I see it, they had a task set before them to get rid of those who were not needed and leave those who were not who were needed. And somebody needs to report on this task. As to the possible help and problems, it is not particularly a big problem to get together a team online. But we need to do it considering the fact that we cannot be present, present in Belarus. It's not so easy to do psychologically, but since it's not the first blow that was dealt to us, we already have this psychological protection. In, in some ways, it makes a democ the bureaucracy, it makes, uh, it shows the true nature of the state agencies, once again. I mean, these activities. Indeed, this is something what that we should have, ex should have expected. If we talk about the online infrastructure, I'm uh, glad to see that we have rigor Rigor here with us, because Rigor is an example of a Belarus politician who, on the one hand, has been living and working outside Belarus, but at the same time, he's not losing the connection with the present. With the... So my question to you is, what do you think? Uh, are the problems here and the, the, you know, the dangers, disadvantages of this current situation. Thank you, Vadim. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sorry for the quality of my internet connection. I believe it's a certain format of repression was expected. These people not do not really understand how it would look like. You could see that the articles used uh, to jail Tatiana Kuzina and her colleague, they were surprised. I thought they would use more light articles, criminal ones, but not the, as heavy as they were. But in fact, those are the same articles used uh, to charge Maxim Znak and uh, Maria Kalesnikova. Although it's obvious that uh, pe people play different roles there. Consequently, it's, uh, it is surprising. But uh, we have gone through many levels of surprise. So there's not much to be surprised about. This process is an uncontrolled. There's a list of people that are affected. It's impossible to forecast the situation, or at least very difficult to do. Therefore, these are the things that worry us. What I, what I think about the repression towards the research institutions. In fact, we're not repressed as researchers, we're repressed as a, a part of something big, like a political struggle, a political st struggle against international organizations, I mean, you know, foreign organizations, and we are part of this process, therefore we get affected. So in a sense, we need to understand that they are not hunting for us. 
personally. If uh, we talk what happens next, I believe uh, the most important step now is to relocate big organizations. At least this is what happened with some people. Indeed, it's a switch to new managerial forms. Some uh, people now to again open new legal entities. Natalia said that the process may take some time in Belarus. These things take a lot of time, and this is worrisome. They're very worrying as for the system, it takes about a day. But with these civil organizations that need to be registered, it takes much more time. Consequently, this simple question of what uh, will be the conditions of, of us as organizations that need to publish information and talk about something and lies. This is a challenge, but I think it's, we can overcome it. We have been actively discussing this with our colleagues from other analytical organizations. Um, and we came to the conclusion that this all needs time. Of course, if we don't consider that some of our colleagues are still in jail. Thank you, Rigor. Right, we'll move on to Katerina Barnokova. The question is the same. How prepared were the organizations that had had experience of long-term relations with the ministries? I think Birok was one of them. And what do we do now to adapt to the new conditions? Thank you, Vadim. Well, we were actually quite ready to this in the sense that we were doing the liquidation process on our own before they came to us, but we were not ready to the detentions of our colleagues. It, was, it became a shock to us. We were not ready to the large scale things that have been happening in the last several weeks, at least morally. Despite the fact that indeed it was the pandemic that helped us, and so we're not uh, thinking about how to meet or we just open Zoom and we talk. Also, it's much easier to talk with our stakeholders. But I cannot say that we're 100% ready and we'll be working just like we did several months ago. I think now um, we need to uh, rethink and, uh, and several things. We need to understand how we work and how we communicate with these people. Because what worked several months ago when we were in, could communicate with the state authorities through uh, tut.by that they were reading. Now it's not available. There are several challenges now. Well, first and foremost for us, we uh, are trying to solve the issue on personal safety and security. We're dealing with that now. Uh, thank you. Katerina. Indeed, the uh, safety and security is uh, paramount now. So after we deal with that, we can think about anything else. Thank you, Eva. Last question. Uh, but now we're moving to the next topic. How do experts communicate with and cooperate with political entities. And here's we have a dilemma of them cooperating with the state. Because indeed, policy papers 
uh, wrote, written by the experts are addressed to some state agencies. There's a moral issue at times as well, how easy it is to, to recommend something to the people that uh, put in jail and colleagues several days ago. And uh, is it possible to discuss the issue of the domestic violence with these people? The second point here is the is it easy to work with people support Lukashenko? In some ways, the, they are more open. On the other hand, this could be part of the political movement. Uh, how, so the question is how to do it in current conditions and how to not cross the line. There are no ready-made answers to that. We'll ask this question to the people again and start with Andre. Andre? I think every organization needs to solve these individually. I'm not ready on my part to discuss the moral framework. I don't know uh, how to answer the question whether you can or cannot cooperate with the state bodies. They are all very different and they are part in the repressions that we're witnessing is very different. I mean, again, we can work with the interior ministry, but on what? If we talk about the rights of the inmates and the prisoners, it's one thing. I believe every organization need to, needs to be responsible for their co cooperation with this or that state agency. All the people have different visions on their missions and their work. It's very difficult to recommend something to these people. I would like the organizations to keep to certain framework and not to communicate with the odious structures. However, there is no single approach or single framework to this issue, and there shouldn't be one. Indeed, the same is true about the alternative political forces, because indeed the question of how the organizations see their mission in the Belarusian society, a number of organizations and communities believe it's very important to stay neutral. I'm sorry, uh, there's a technical glitch. Anyway, it would be wrong for the expert community and to become part of the coalition. The nature of the expert community as an organization is on one hand, the promotion of certain ideas and preparation of policy papers. On the other hand, the preservation of the autonomy of the political entities remains very important. If there's no such autonomy, there's no legitimacy. So, the expert community is a, a big part of the uh, 
the fact that the researchers have become influencers. Therefore, they are subject to repression and they affect the public opinion. The majority of the resource of this influence has to do with the fact that people have competencies of receiving information, have competencies of analyzing what is happening in Belarus. I mean, the new main knowledge of what this is also an, a, a, a target for oppression by the state authorities because they believe they can replace the analyst with more loyal ones. So anyway, I believe uh, you need to keep distance because this distance is the foundation of a separate analytical stance and in information space. Thank you, Andre. Indeed, for SIMPA, this issue could be very much relevant, so it is for others. If the organization deals with uh, birds, we can do it together with the state or without the state, but if the organization is uh, researching the state government reform, the, uh, this, uh, that way connected with the state bodies. It's impossible to imagine their work without uh, communication with the state indices. So the question is how to give your recommendations in this situation. I will support what Andre said in the sense that on the one hand, this is a strategy of advocacy that is de decided by uh, s several research centers, but overall the mission of the research centers is that they need to give their product to the society. We uh, keep it to the same position. All our results of our research are available and they're to everyone, whether people like it or like us or not. We are still following this pattern. We don't have any dialogue with the state officials these days. I don't think they're also uh, willing to provide us with any information these days, but considering this specific nature of uh, our research, because we write about the state, it's impossible to do it without uh, any connections with the state authorities. It could be done, but that would be just simply theoretically. I don't know what happens next. Currently, we we write now research without communication with our, of with state agencies. What about keeping the distance? Can you add something about this? Again. The headquarters and their representatives feel could uh, access our information on the website. We are officially not affiliated to any political headquarters. Thank you. All right, let's move on. Maybe. What do you think about this repression? Do you think it's part this purge is part of the is separate or is it part of the general picture? Also, the next question is what do we do next?
Коли відказати на мою, так сказати, заочну нам повинно не заочну, ми якби обоє знаходимося тут разом. Well, answering your question, I must say that we're all here together. Regarding your question about our argument with Andrei, I don't think we are influences. Apart from uh, Sergei Chale and Artyom Shaiban, they are much more influences than we are, although they have never said they were. We are simply part of the something bigger. We are part of the civil community and civil society. I don't think this is good or bad. We're simply serving the same uh, just a, a, a bigger goal, and we're in a different context. Uh, answering the question, how to co cooperate now? You opened, uh, you said that some people from the New Ideas organization is also part of the Babarika headquarters or the Razam party. We are not in the managerial positions. The New Ideas Center is not affiliated with any of those, but we are not hiding this fact. I believe some steps of politicization are faced by many organizations. So it's not only about us being more or less political, but the question is, what can we do for the situation that we are witnessing in the country to end as soon as possible? And we should base our work on with this or that political entity based on this. So in other words, We say that we uh, support. Looks like Yegor is having technical problems. Well, Igor is not here. Where Igor is back. If we knew that it would do some good, we would do it. But the question is, I don't think there'll be too much good of uh, political centers becoming more political, uh, them saying that they're working with political agents. If it was advantageous, it would be worth doing for now. I don't see it's a necessary thing to do. Undoubtedly, we should mention uh, values like democracy and the free market, justice. These things are very important and need to be mentioned. As analytical centers, we need to focus on them, but it doesn't force us to become political. We talk about the cooperation with the state. I mean, it's uh, very difficult to imagine that now. We consider the roles that people have now. It's clearly, it's difficult to go back. And so we shouldn't even try. We need to live in the reality, in the new reality. What used to work in the past doesn't work anymore. People who wanted to go back, I think they're wrong. We need to work in the new reality, particularly if we consider how to work with the new agencies, the current agencies of the state, or the political entities that uh, part of the system. Thank you, Rahor. Uh, Next is Katerina. What about Birok? 
do you think Biroc will become more political if it knew that it, this will help the, the cause? Andrei said there are several state agencies. What do you think about you being liquidated? How ready are you to cooperate with the state agencies in the current situation? And also other headquarters. Indeed, we have been actively cooperating with the Ministry of the Economy and the National Bank before the August next last year. And we thought that it's a big advantage that have a co co connection with these stakeholders and can directly work with them. After August 2020, we understood that the direct communication is not possible anymore and the, that we cannot do it directly as we used to do it in the past. But indeed, we knew that our articles were still being read. People kept coming to the events, even though we never sent any targeted paper-based invitations saying that distinguished minister this and that, please come visit us. We stopped doing that, but people still did because we have a long established lens and we had a certain image. Clearly, that as repressions were getting more and more worse, the distance between us grew bigger. While at first there was some informal contest, fewer people kept coming to our events. I think the news about the searches and the liquidation and so on, they will become for many state officials and uh, and uh, one of our state target audiences is academicians in the sense that there are people working in the higher education system of Belarus, researching topics there. They're all state officials. For them, it's a signal that, well, in the past, they could tell yourself that Biroc is something neutral. Now they will perceive Biroc as a purely opposition organization and behave accordingly. They would uh, participate less in our initiatives. This is uh, one of the major risks for our activities. For example, for our PhD school, where we invite the PhD students. We used to do it together with the biggest University of Belarus. I don't think we can do it. we can do it as effectively as we used to. Do. As to the headquarters situation in the last several months, did not really affect the cooperation with them. We were ready, and we asked them ready to provide our expertise to these organizations. We're not ready to close our cooperation because we want to remain an independent research center. But today, as just like Rigor said, when he said that he's dependent, he's not that much believed as when Natalia says it. So it's important to keep the distance. Relocation for many people is a challenge in this way, because if you move to Warsaw or Lithuania, it will be difficult to say later that we're not, we're still independent. Indeed, as far as the relocation goes, if you move to Vilnius, it will be, you will probably have to prove to people that you know you don't work with the headquarters. Anyway, 
we do still have some questions we have discussed some things and uh, we need to move to the next one as to the relocation relocation to a particular city would uh, make this expert suspicious but what can this lead to in the past subjectively maybe but I uh, remember the difference between the analytical centers who were present in Belarus physically and those who have uh, been outside Belarus for a long time. It was obvious and it was clear from how they talk and how they write, even if he didn't know where they were placed. So, So we would like to discuss how to avoid this radicalization. I recently thought what this today's situation will lead to, how this will affect the expert community, when this will affect Back with you. Nobody have experience of working outside the country and inside the country. I'll uh, continue my argument with rigor about the research. I'm here based on my opinion on the same thoughts that uh, uttered by the analysts, prostate analyst, programmer analyst, they say that analytical centers uh, that produce uh, the, some research results uh, need to be closed down because their work is used by the state authorities because they reinterpret the history in the wrong way and so on and so forth. So they are seen, the independent researchers are seen as biased. They're not, the state is not adding these representatives of the state of, of the independent research centers to the civil society, but they are perceiving them as the organizations that are trying to change the mindset of people. And this model has been discussed since the autumn of 2020. The third is a drawing a line between the NGOs and the analytical centers. As to the cities and the, the placement and so on, again, it all depends on the nature of activities of this that organization. I don't see a major problem here because the activity of the analytical sphere has been the same for 10 years. We held events outside Belarus and inside Belarus. Some people used to work outside the country, others worked inside the country. So the quality of the research in separate fields, well, let's say it's history. Basically, I mean the history of Belarus this field in many ways is determined by the people who work outside Belarus, working in Poland, Lithuania, Germany, and so on and so forth. Uh, 
Well, after the authorities kicked out some of the historians, the history may will be affected, but the people who do the research on this field do that outside of Belarus mostly. Again, the archives in the Vilnius and Warsaw could, could be accessed by these researchers. If we go back to politics, we analyzed here and we still analyze here this phenomenon based on the open sources. The majority of our colleagues did that. It's uh, difficult to say that there were some insights or any interviews with the state officials that they were held. It did happen, but in, in general, it didn't play a major role. Maybe in the analytics, there, there was more of that than it was in the Oh, it's called journalists. But again, I don't think it was mainstream. I don't think that people who are outside Belarus if they uh, still read the Belarusian sources and communicate with their colleagues, I don't think they're very much automatically get separated and they're losing something in this respect. Again, if you look at the number of research conducted, I think all this research was done by uh, foreign centers. I mean, they out, placed outside Belarus. The same is true about the research of the Belarusian society and many other fields. So I believe this is a problem, a serious a challenge. But uh, the science has been international for a long time. It's no longer that connected to the particular place as it used to be in the 18th, 19th century. It is solvable through the redistribution of the roles between the people who collect information and uh, analyze this information and present, present this information to a wider audience. It's obvious that the last two roles are the most important and the most vulnerable, and they uh, could be affected by the security threats inside the country while the work with results or the work with the open sources is not something that presents a problem, at least at a certain stage. In conclusion, I want to say that this is a certain challenge, but I believe that uh, considering today's level of development of communications, uh, international academic sphere, the majority of this, these challenges could be disregarded. Response could be found to these challenges without uh, significant deterioration of the quality of the materials and research. Thank you, Andrei. You are very optimistic, I see. Natalia, are you, uh, do you agree with Andrei? Do you think that nothing will be lost if uh, your research is taken outside Belarus? There's a certain problem, of course, here, because one thing is we consider statistics from the Bellstat website and analyze it and draw models and graphs. Although not, we understand it, but all the statistics is available in the, as an open source. But if we work with the uh, focus groups, 
It can be done online, but it's a bit different. Ideally, it would be great for you to be in the field. However, yes, indeed, the modern means of communication allow to do it from outside the country, particularly during the pandemic. We're using this method, methods. However, of course, there, there's a danger of getting separated. Certain steps are made to overcome this. I believe that it's much better to be inside the country if you are analyzing the society than to be outside of it. But we do what we can. Thank you for this optimistic and not so optimistic approach. I would now like to give floor to Rigor. Do you have any practical advice about how to not get separated from the context? Even though physically you have not been very much present in Belarus, maybe you could recommend something to the analyst working inside Belarus. Do you think this is a serious problem? I think that the separation from the context, first of all, can you hear me? Yes. Not presence of the context depends very much on the person. I've seen a lot of examples in Warsaw of people who are inside the context and those who are outside the context. So I believe it's, it could be important, not that much damaging for the important work from the point of view of organization and structure, I believe this does harm. We had a model of presence in a bigger, not so bigger cities and towns. This way we were promoting uh, Gore is disappearing. Right, we'll continue without Igor now. I cannot hear Rehor for the moment. Katrina. What do you do with that risk? For now, I don't see any risks for the quality of our analytics. I don't see major influence, zeitgeist. Maybe we'll become even more objective because we'll be analyzing the, the numbers and figures. And I'm worried by the fact that the, there is less and less figures in the Bielstadt website. Not so long ago, Bielstadt removed the information about the production figures of the petrochemicals industry. We used to buy some data, but it's impossible to do now because we don't no longer have a legal entity. I don't think, however, that this is the bigger, biggest issue. The biggest issue is not in the quality of 
analytics and research, but it's how we're going to move, get this message across our, to our stakeholders and our partners, because the, we have fewer, fewer ways of doing this, starting from the independent media. Here, I believe it will be possible for us to use this time to strengthen our connections with the international expert community, the academic community. But we need to think more about doing this. Thank you. Indeed, the issue of analyzing the open figures and numbers is very pertinent. Igor, are you back? Maybe you should not just switch off the camera. I think that our biggest problem was that we were doing a lot of work inside the country in uh, different cities, not only in Minsk, but also in the regional centers. This was the model that was important in the pre-COVID era. It was totally destroyed. We no longer can do the things and do the work we used to do. We are switching to the online approach, but um, it's not the same. Undoubtedly, the summer schools that we used to organize in the past do happen online, but they do have limitations had, that had to do with the uh, absence of the networking elements and so on. Undoubtedly, we miss some of those things. On the other part, on the other hand, we'll have more possibilities to do research because we have more time at least theoretically. Of course, the situation is changing, but theoretically, we have more time to develop our research. And I believe it's forced migration will lead to the more bigger productivity or a wider range of researchers. You'll have more time to analyze something, to write papers and so on. And last but not least is the forced migration. If an entity has a significant number of members which who, are, who have different statuses, people who work, people who come there to do something from time to time, so-called association experts, or if these are people found in different parts of the world, this creates a difficult structure to manage. A big challenge is how to manage it, let alone the fact that there are technical glitches and uh, salaries all these things uh, need to be done. Thank you, Rigor. Maybe you could add something. Uh, I could answer the question, how not to get immersed in the Polish, British politics, but uh, be, and what solutions you found for yourself. First and foremost, it was about working with experts play in this that country. We now have to deal with the fact that we're living in different contexts, but this distance very much depends on the people. 
If people understand how the information field works, then if they understand the algorithms of, if, if they understand how they get into this field, they probably understand better how they should aim to aim for staying in this context. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. It is very inspiring. Maybe we are too optimistic about assessing our capacities, but still. And my question is today, if uh, I see that a lot of people here present the analytical community, I saw Mr. Karbalevich, Artem Scheiben. Maybe there are some more people. Valery Ivanovich, when you had to leave, for me, it was a signal. It was a if Mr. Karbalevich has left, uh, it means there's a big pressure on the expert community. I'm glad to see that you're fine. My question is how big a blow was it on the expert community? How, how did it affect the civil society? What do we do with it now? What do we do to continue our work? Thank you, Vadim. I'm glad to see everyone. Not so long ago, I moved to a different country. I'm still getting used to this country. Say how long I will stay here. It's difficult to comment on the political process in Belarus. I believe that this is not the major problem. In the era of the internet, if we talk about terror research, it doesn't matter where you're placed and it doesn't affect the quality of your research. The internet era radically changed the situation. Here, I don't think that there are serious research problems. The problems are mostly of this psychological nature. Basically, it's important to adapt to the new conditions, how to perceive the new situation. For now, the number of the media outlets that are, are turning for me for comment has not gone down. It is still important. And I believe it hasn't really affected, and I don't think it will affect the process of uh, Belarus and politics and the process of evaluation. Thank you, Valery Ivanovich. What about the uh, uh, the question when I asked how it will ricochet uh, at the civil society? I refer here to the dialogue between Rigor and Andre. What do you think the, the truth lies? I think both of them are right. If you read Mr. Mukovoschik and, and Sovietska Belarusia, you will see that there is regularly bad mouths, independent experts. On the other hand, the question is how many people read the Belarusian? Sovietska Belarusia, and how many people will adhere to his advice? 
I don't think there's a systemic approach. I think here we have a different logic. Who gets arrested, who gets searched? I don't see any clear cut logic here. The decision there is probably taken by either one person or a narrow circle of people based on their priorities, their vision of a threat. This is more important than the position of ideologues. Thank you, Valery Ivanovich. Anton, who else? can answer this question. Artyom, if you're here, can you tell us about your life in Ukraine and how it affected your work? Should we do something about it or should be, we believe it's fine during the internet era. Thank you, Vadim. I know uh, that many people, particularly journalists, uh, have to work in a particular country in the field. If you are a photographer or a reporter, analyst them find it much easier to do their work. But there are two real cognitive problems affect, that uh, affect us, all people that love Belarus, particularly those who analyze the politics. But people who had to leave the country always have a ten tendency to assess uh, the politicization of the society in the wrong way. Particularly, it's evident if we talk about the members of the political headquarters. When they left the country, they had their idea of the what is happening in Belarus. This is their mistake. When you don't see the real society, don't walk the real streets of the country. The second uh, cognitive problem is wishful thinking. Because we're all people, we want to go back. And I think, this can affect the analytics of the expert in the sense that they will try to adjust the facts and events to their desire to go back. But this all does not outweigh the, another important argument, namely uh, that there's very little space remaining for public analysts, public analysis. And the quality of the analytical program product is suffering due to this. We don't have much of a choice here in the sense that it's much worse to analyze things from the jail than it is from Kiev, Venice or Warsaw. Yeah, it, you need to be bold here. Right, let's continue. Anton, is there anyone else from the expert community that we see on the screen who would like to add something or ask a question? I see that we have several questions in the chat. Let's have people ask the question or utter their remarks. I see quite a few experts on the screen. The question is how much they want to comment. Let's read the question from the chat. The new Kutina is asking everyone. What can the international community do 
and if there there is a need for a special relocation program for the NGO sector. What can be done from outside of Belarus? This respect. That's a very good question. Thank you, Daniel. Should we follow the same order? Andrei, you go first. Do we need a special relocation program? If not, what else could be of use? That's a more of a rhetorical question. Of course, it, ne it is needed. Since people have started relocating and leaving the country, it would be better to have this process and make it more sustainable so that there will no significant human resource losses. But the question here, I think, is not a, only about this. Relocation is a short-term solution. The question here is how much the new format, the analytical centers, will be able to function sustainably. And for this, we need to have something more than a relocation program. We need to develop cooperation with various stakeholders. It's also better to establish contacts with the universities that would give us significant sustainability and so on and so forth. There's also a need for significant diversification. Cooperation with regional centers, international centers. One of the ways out is the involvement of the international community and international researchers. I think the solution could be this, and not just the short-term relocation program, although it would actually help as well. That's a very interesting thought. Maybe it uh, will help us to think how to better cooperate with local research centers. Maybe it will uh, get, get some benefits. Natalia, what do you think about this? How much this cooperation could be useful? What do you think there are other more effective mechanisms of international support? Under Igorov has written very well in the comments, saying that there needs to be a institutional support so that people will have funds you know, to sustain themselves. And in a quiet situation, when people understand what their prospects are, they should they will find it easier to cooperate with the international organizations with the local organizations among them are consortia and international projects Thank you. We also discussed with Andrei Igorov. I don't think any organization will be against this approach. Rigor, what do you think about this? What international support would help? 
связи, или это просто задержка, как обычно была? Everyone can not hear us, or is there a technical glitch again? Still cannot see the whole. Да. Катерина, what do you think about this? I will echo what our, my colleague said about institutional support. We were lucky. We received institutional support from SIDA. This helps us a lot in this difficult moment. We have something stable. We know that we have something to lean on. The major task for everyone is not to lose the expertise, not to lose the people. The people who can think that they don't need this low paid work. Because we are far away from our stakeholders, we have to leave our country. It would be great to support these people. At least through the participation with international organizations, maybe some internships could be launched. Some of them already have been. They could be of interest of it for Belarusian researchers since we're not inside the country. Also, we know that the locations where the majority of analysts and NGOs are moving to, maybe we should create support centers there. I think this is where the focus should lie. That's a very interesting thought about the support centers where people have relocated. Should this look like a co-working space or should it be a resource center? Please elaborate your thoughts. I'm not ready to answer this question. First, people need to be helped. I mean, everybody had pro has problems starting from the papers and the office spaces it would be great to have a co-working space judging by the community there based on this needs could understand what is needed but some somebody needs to be done so it's better to create an immigrant office everywhere that's a very interesting thought. Similar approach has been done in the past. In many ways, it'd be very pertinent in the sense it will be a concrete project. Okay, Anton, do we have any more questions or remarks see something in the chat i see a discussion about this strategy between maxim and artem right, maybe Artyom could comment on something. Somebody might, might add something as well. Okay, the question from Max Dmitrukhov, quite a long one. Can we say that the, we have the following picture. They're purging the space for Gongo, they're closing down the NGOs and replacing them with loyal agencies. Then they will release political prisoners and mitigate sanctions.
Возможно, Артем, ты хочешь ответить на это? Maybe Artem, you could answer this question. Я не уверен, что эта дискуссия прям, конечно, интересна, но... I don't think this discussion is of much interest to everyone. I don't believe it's possible to do this. I mean, this schemes of rep replacing people with the loyal structures because Congos are working for their own consumers, consumers of information and cons stakeholders and donors. But all these entities will not swallow this fake and will not support it. It's not a market of the cucumber sales where you can replace some competitors and bring in others. I think the fact that these goals are difficult to achieve, uh, achieve doesn't mean that the state would not want to do this. Andrei wanted to add something. I believe that in fact, I don't think they believe that they can purge the expert field, replacing it with the loyal structures. The very existing ones like the Academy of Sciences, and other pro-state pro experts, will probably move in, will be moving in this direction. But I also believe that will be difficult to implement two things are needed here, intellectual potential, people who would do this at a very good level and in very narrow segments. Let's say in Belarus it will be 15 people. It will be difficult to find 15 people who will be real experts. Secondly, you need the space for creativity. But in the model that we see developing, there's no place for this. In such conditions to create something interesting or appealing you need to try very hard they probably don't want to do this and they have done something for this over the last year but i don't think it will give much results probably because there will not be enough resources and space from the political point of view, the political space will be too narrow. That's a very important discussion. Some people believe it's very easy to do, but it's not. Could, does anybody want to add something? I wanted to add that uh, uh, the authorities cannot replace the media. A long time has passed since August and their attempts end up in uh, some funny propaganda. In Berok, we have the biggest problem of finding good analysts. We have found them, we have them. I don't think uh, that the authorities will be able to do the same in six or 12 months. What they have achieved to do was not really popular with uh, stakeholders. Indeed, I agree uh, that it's very difficult to get together a team of experts. Uh, 
восточного вектора международной организации думают, что они обращаются к государству в объясни явно в письме. Мы думаем, что если это письмо, потому что это письмо в интернете, явно явно объясни пока не справишь. Judging by the but the situation, the authorities cannot cope with this task. Do we have any raised hands or chats? Alexei is asking, what would be the next group that fall under repression? What is the name of the repression? Because clearly they uh, st stir the situation up. I mean, this is a $1 million question. Let's ask a question, answer the question, who will be next and uh, how much it will stir discontent, if, if any. Andre, what do you think? Do you think the authorities are trying to scare people and uh, do their actions really stir up discontent? Could you please repeat your question? How much the repression scare people or does it stir the situation? You mean the people in the country? In the country, in the sector, and in general? Basically, are the repressions effective? I cannot really hear you well. Please turn off your uh, camera. But could somebody else answer this question meanwhile? Because Andre is having technical issues. Katerina, please. I'll answer a part, a part of the question. Like I said, this wave of repression has to do with the sanctions against the official Belarus. We were warned that it would happen because we don't have analytical response to the sanctions, economic response. Who's next? I think the business entities could be next. Those, uh, they showed that they were not particularly loyal, but I believe the economic stability what we see is the only stable thing that the authorities possess the desire to save and preserve the economy will overcome the desire to repress the businesses and businessmen who came out to protest in this in the autumn i just uh, don't want to shoot in my foot once again Maybe somebody else would like to answer this question, like Artem Shraiban, Sergei Chali, Andrei Igorov, Tatiana Shitsova, Yuri Drakahrust. We have a great team of experts today. Some of the speakers. Ready? But we have a problem with the internet. Well, I think we, since we don't have. possibility to communicate in the best possible way, we should 
turn to our chat. The question is, what kind of help the commercial pro bono lawyers from big firms can provide to the community, analytical community? And the answer is that uh, some assistance will be needed to open a legal entity and so on. Thank you very much for this question. This uh, help will be much appreciated. Do we have any more questions or speakers willing to ask questions or answer? Not, I think we have covered a lot today. On the other hand, we are all living in the very bad conditions in the sense like it was not that expert community wanted to be subject to pogroms, to searches and to political pressure. But we haven't we have discussed important things today. But also uh, it's not as bad as it could have been. We need to remember this as well. Anton, if we don't have any questions. We can say goodbye to our experts, to our viewers. Thank you very much, everyone who took part in our discussion. I would like to thank in particular the, the people who did take part in our discussion, but experienced internet problems. Also would like to thank and to support our colleagues who are now in jail, Tatiana Kuzina, Valeria Kostigova, Remind them, of course, we'll continue our work. Expert and political clubs will continue to convene so the people who are now in a difficult situation will be able to go back, not to the burned field, but to the favorable conditions. Thank you, everyone.